Alhamdulillah, my dear wonderful people, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wouldn't you want that one day you had the opportunity to actually meet Rasulullah and ask him a question that would serve you very well today? Like you had this opportunity to travel in time 1400 years back and ask Rasulullah one question that would serve you very well today on how to behave and perform to enter Jannah and to gain the love of Allah? Of course we would. Every one of us would want that opportunity. Well, Allah Taala has already deputized somebody who did just that on our behalf. This hadith is reported in Sahih Muslim. One day a man went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and said to him in the translation of the hadith, he said, Ya Rasulullah, the laws and regulations and teachings of Islam have increased on me. And I am just getting, I don't know where my head is. I don't know where I am. Do tell me something that I will never ever ask anyone after you. And that thing would serve me to enter Jannah, to gain the love of Allah and enter Jannah. Isn't this my brothers and my sisters all we want? Then Rasulullah told him, قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقِمْ قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقِمْ And this hadith is in Muslim. I.e. say, آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ I have believed in Allah. ثُمَّ اسْتَقِمْ And then, set yourself on a straight course. الْإِسْتِقَامَ الْمُسْتَقِمْ صِرَاطْ الْمُسْتَقِمْ I want to speak to you today about this in this super pep talk. About you, who you are, what you are, and why you matter to Allah. How does Allah look at you? What do you represent vis-a-vis to Allah? What are you? Because we live in a day and age where everyone is making us feel so slowly, very, very diminishing. We don't have a size. When we look to the West, they are inventing. They are really on top of the world. They feel big. When we look at the East, everything is going down South, and we are trapped in the two betweens. I want to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, about this universal reality. Don't ever believe someone that tells you to be like someone else. When people teach us about Islam, they always, always, and this is a big mistake that has been going on forever. When they give you an example, they say, Abu Bakr Siddiq did this. Omar did that. Ali did, 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 did. Islam is usually personified in 10 people, no more. Our mother Aisha did this, and Abu Hurairah did that, radiallahu anhu, mardab, all of that. It's like me telling you, learn maths so that you become like Einstein. That's it. You've got this blockage. Where, how am I going to get to him? It's just like in a complete different league. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the whole of Al-Quran and the sunnah of Rasulullah there is not one hadith or one ayah that commands us Muslims to be like Rasulullah. I repeat, you'll be surprised. Islam doesn't ask us to be like Rasulullah, like becoming him. No. Islam commands us to follow him. And this is a difference. There is a difference between following somebody and between being like somebody. I want you to pay attention. Al-Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تُطِيعُوهُ تَهْتَدُوا And if you obey him, you will reach guidance. And in لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا You have in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the best set example for everyone's Allah on the day of judgment. But there is not in Al-Quran, I repeat, there is not in Al-Quran or the Sunnah one single command where it says, كُونُوا مِثْلَهِ Be like him. Because Allah knows we will never ever be like anyone else. Allah created you a single individual. You have your own brain. You have your own fingerprints. You have your own eye cataract.
You have your own characteristics. There are not. Uh, there is no other one like you for the entirety of mankind. Which means your behavior is only yours. And Islam never asks you to lose your behavior, to lose your personality, to lose who you are, to become somebody else. And Islam doesn't ask me to be like Abu Bakr. It doesn't want me to be like Omar. It wants me to do what they did to the best of what I can. Please write this down. Al Islam commands me to do as they did to the best of my ability. Sometimes you find a book, and in that book they tell you the story of people that pray the whole night, Qiyam al-Layl. And it's two, three, four volumes. Four. And then when you read, you will never stand up because they will tell you this man stood up and he cried, cried, cried his life out. And the other one he did. And me sometimes, I stand up at night to do Qiyam al-Layl and my body, my heart is not in there. I'm not, it's not always dingling with joy. Sometimes I just stand up to pray. I pray two, four rak'at. Most I am tired, I go back to bed. And then there is the guilt trip. Uh-huh. You are not like Abu Bakr. Mistake. I shouldn't be like Abu Bakr. I do what he did, but I am not to become himself. If I don't do that with Rasulullah, then I will not do it with another person. So my brothers and my sisters, please, Al-Islam doesn't want you to become like Rasulullah in resemblance. Al-Islam wants you to worship Allah as he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did to the best of your ability. This is extremely important. And this is what I call the freedom from experience. You learn freely from an experience. And this is where you make mistakes and there is no problem with that. This is number one. Number two, Allah made, gave you your soul and that soul is yours and yours only. Not another creature can have your soul. That soul of yours is how you look at it. Many of us today would just look at the soul, whatever is contained in your own body. I.e., you are what the boundaries of your body allow you to be. So if you are six feet tall, that's it, you are six feet tall, that's who you are. And if you are nine meter wide, that's who you are. But actually that is wrong. Your soul, all right, please this down and down. My soul is not contained within the limits of my body. My body is contained within the limitless of my soul. This, this way it's called. I.e., your body, if you have a very, very, very ambitious, uh, ambitious soul, there is no telling what you can accomplish. And that's what mankind did. When they felt they wanted to fly, the body followed that. Allah looks at your heart, looks at your soul, what it is you want, and then he gives you. If Allah was to give us based on our bodies, we would never have invented a needle. So my brothers and my sisters, never ever now think of yourself as something or someone small. The sky is the limit, they said. Because with your soul, you can look at the sky. You are on earth, and you can look at the sky, and you can perceive the clouds up there. Can you touch your, the clouds with your hands? You cannot. So why are you restricting your abilities to the confinement to your own physicality? Why these self-limiting beliefs? Why do you let other people run your life? My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you a reality. Al-Hasan al-Basri was asked a question about a shaitan. He said, what is a shaitan? What is, why do you look so bigly at this shaitan? He said, we obeyed him and it didn't get us into agreement with Allah. And we disobeyed him and he didn't hurt us. So who is shaitan at the end of the day? My brothers and my sisters, and this man is great. We obey the shaitan, and where did it get us? Closer to Allah or far from Allah? It got us far from Allah. And we disobey a shaitan, 
Does he hurt us? Is he doing something to hurt us? No, he's a loser. He is a loser. You are the winner. Why are you scared of somebody who is scared of you? You say, Bismillah, you beat him hands down. Allah has made a shaitan invisible. Do you know why? Because if a shaitan was visible, he would never stand one opportunity, one chance. He would never have that opportunity to misguide you. Because every time he opens his mouth to misguide you, you're going to grab him from the neck and beat him to death. You keep quiet. Don't say a word. Even your little child would beat Iblis hands down. Iblis is very weak. This is why Allah Taala made him and his progeny and all the havoc and chaos that they cause invisible because we humans, him being invisible is still weak to us. It's just us who chose to be weak to him. This is why the lot of questions that I get these days is this person here is possessed by a shaitan. And some people they say, does a shaitan get inside the human body? What people don't realize, my brothers and my sisters. A shaitan gets inside us, of course he can get. But is he going to affect my behavior? That he can't. People confuse between the two issues, him being able to penetrate you and him being able to remotely drive you. It's like when he penetrates you, it's like you go inside the car. And then you take possession of your car, you can drive it. No, a shaitan has absolutely no power when he goes into you. One day somebody said, well, I heard uh, uh, my friend and his voice, he starts talking differently. Oh, come on, my brothers, for the love of Allah. It's because you don't know the physics of the sound and how it, all this. But anyway, a shaitan can enter into us? Yes, he can. Can he? Drive us from inside and make us do evil stuff? He can't. Otherwise, we will not punish anyone in Islam. I just can go and fornicate. And when I am caught, I say, it's the shaitan inside me who made me fornicate. You know, I didn't do that. And I can steal money. And the first thing is, oh, it's not me. It's shaitan inside me. He made me steal. I lie. I didn't lie. It's him who spoke. And you get the idea. So my brothers and my sisters, you are in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than what you think you are in your own eyes. So why do you choose to remain low quality when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala believes in you that you are high quality? Allah, you mean, Allah believes in his own way subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are capable of a lot. And that's why he asks a lot of you. When, if you are a coach, and the one you are coaching is a world champion, and you push them, and you keep pushing them, and you keep pushing them, is that champion going to turn to you and say, why are you pushing me to the limits? No. He will keep working with you because he sees, and he believes that you see in him or in her what they don't see in themselves. Guess what? Same thing here. When Allah wants you to stand up at night and do Qiyamul Layl, do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just saying that like that? No, because Allah knows you are capable. And I'll give you an example. You are back home, my brother and my sister, after a long, tiring day. You really can't move. Your eyes can, oh, you just want to go to bed and you are tired and you just don't want to talk to anybody. You are totally exhausted. Someone calls you and says, come, and you go, no, I'm not coming, I'm just going to go, oh, I can't. And then you get a phone call, and they tell you, your mother is about to die. How would you behave at that moment there? Are you going to tell them, I'm extremely tired? Or suddenly tiredness takes off, and you stand up, and you start doing as if being tired was never there at the first place. Or you are extremely tired on your wife or your husband or whatever comes and says the kid is going to die, take him to the hospital. My brothers and my sisters, there is always more energy inside us than what our physique, the body, wants us to believe. So from now on, from now on, never ever think of yourself as a small creature and limit the possibilities of your soul. 
Imagination is one of those gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gave us so that we can experience the world at different angles, different levels. For example, you have not existed at the time of Rasulullah But if you sit in your bed, you close your eyes, and then you start imagining a time of the Sahaba and things like that, your body will just take you there. The brain will take you there. Let me tell you something about the brain, and I love the brain. Al-Islam has never, ever marginalized the brain. The brain, Al-Islam encourages the brain like no other. Every ayah where he says, أَفَلَا يَعْقِلُونَ الْعَقْلِ Don't they use their brains? الفقه, also يفقهون, you use also the brain. Most, العقل is the first word that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke when he sent down the Quran. اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم Just like our father was honored because of his brain. Imagination, my sisters and my brothers, is a powerful tool. Your imagination is always manufacturing scenarios, good or bad, even when you are asleep. If you want to buy a car and it really is closer to your heart, when you are at home and you are sleeping, you start seeing cars in your dreams. Why do you think that is happening? Because your subconscious knows that cars are important to you and it starts straight away in the imagination type. For example, now I'm going to give you something about imagine. Let's imagine you are with your husband or you are yourself, whatever, but you are on a beach. The sun is about to set. The beach is on your left. And you kind of like you're just walking, the water is warm, and you are walking, and those beautiful waves are just hitting your feet. And you are just wearing this beautiful summer dress or summer shorts, and you're walking on the sand. And you're looking at the sun up there, and it's about the sun set, and everything is just beautiful, serene, calm. The air is beautifully warm. Okay, wake up now. Now, do you see how your brain goes away with that? And sometimes I just think of it, okay, now you're going to cross the road. And guess what? Look on your, there is a track. You get scared, the body produces the hormone of scare. Imagination, your imagination is always manufacturing scenarios, good and bad. And it is your imagination that creates your own fears. I repeat, it's your imagination when it's not controlled by you, creates fears. And when you create fears, the body, the body produces the negative hormones and they affect you negatively. And also through your imagination, you can create good scenarios which will lead to joy. Choice is yours. I will also speak to you here about one thing, my brothers and my sisters. If you think your mind is simple, then you are a simpleton. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this powerful brain inside you, it's because Allah wants to tell you you are extremely complex as a human being. A shaitan and your own ego, they want you to continuously believe you are not good enough. And you think to yourself, I'll never be good enough in Islam. I'll never be good enough as a father. I'll never be good enough as a mother. I'll never be as better as the next two leggers or as the next two legresses. I don't think I'll find love or I don't think my life will get better. I don't think my concerns, my problems, my worries, my anxieties will go away. This is the voice of your ego. Your ego is really, really, really against you and if you listen to it there will always be someone doing better than you if you believe that your ego cannot stand up at night to do qiyamul layl everyone else will stand up to do qiyamul layl and you will be the only one still sleeping in your bed if your ego tells you you're not good enough to learn arabic 
Everyone else will learn Arabic and you will not learn Arabic. Subhanallah. And if you listen to it again, there will always be someone doing better than you. No matter what you gain, ego will never let you rest. And I find it really peculiar that I have emotions, you have emotions. Why am I not easily affected by what people say about me or how the family try to pressurize me to doing things that I don't want to do or pressurize me to do something that is haram? And why they get to you very quickly? There is only one difference, my brothers and my sister. You allow it. End of it. You allow it. And because you go into this analytical mode, if I don't do this, then I will lose that. And if I do this, and then, and then, and then you get into that thing there, comparative mode, and it's not going to work for you. And hoping is not having faith. When you hope, it doesn't get you anywhere. Hope gets you to walk in the fire and hoping that it won't burn you. But having faith makes you leap over fire. And this is what I want you, my brothers and my sisters, to start the differentiating between the two issues. I hope I will go to Jannah. Oh, no. I have faith I would go to Jannah. That would make me work for Jannah. You are ready and able, my brothers and my sisters, to do beautiful things in this world. Allah opens a multitude of doors in front of you every single day. And after you walk through these doors today, you'll only ever have two choices, love or fear. Choose love, my brothers and sisters. Choose love. Worship Allah because you love Him. Don't worship Allah because you're scared of hellfire. When you donate charity, love Allah. Don't it because you love Allah, not because you're scared of Him. It's different, my brothers, going to work and being there at 9 o'clock because you love what you do, as opposed to you are scared of being fired. Even if you are at 9 o'clock, when you love, you go there with a beautiful outlook on work. And if you go with the fear of being fired, you start your day on negativity. My brother and my sister, tattoo this saying of mine on your hearts and in your behavior, and obviously not in your bodies. Our life is full of halal. It is our vision and desires that don't have enough halal in them, period. I will say this again, my brothers. Life, our life is full of halal. It is our vision and desires that don't have enough halal in them, period. Don't ever let fear turn you against your very able heart. Every time you fail, Every time something happens to you that you don't want to, it's because you have allowed fear to control you. If your family abuses you and you feel the stress, it's because you are scared, not because you love. Not because you love. That man who asked Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, tell me something in Islam. He says, Qul amantu billah. And you must learn the belief in Allah very well. And then set your course on a journey. That course is called be on the straight path. Rasulullah has given us a golden ring to wear everywhere you go. And that is what is going to help us always stay focused. You know what that is? How to tell when something is evil, haram or not. قال صلى الله عليه وسلم الإثم ما حاك في صدرك وكرهت أن يطلع عليه الناس The sin that will be a sin against you is something that when you do it or you want to do it you don't feel good in your heart you feel something ain't right and you hate people to figure it out so if on your phone you have pictures of a naked woman and when you look at it, even if your heart is dead and you find that attractive, whatever. However, would you want other Muslims to find out that naked picture on your phone? And the answer is no.
You don't want, you'll hide it and you put your password on it and make sure that there are 600 passwords and nobody can find them out and you encrypt everything. Well, that is a sin. And as long as it is in your phone, the sin goes on. My brothers and my sisters, mankind, you as a mankind, you are a complex creation. You are a complex creation in your body, in the way you think in your emotions, in your actions, in your interactions, in the way you formulate ideas, in the, your perceptions. My brothers and my sisters, you are nothing, you are like nothing else. Imagine this. What are you in the end of the day? You are nothing else but a big lump of meat. If you are left alone with a full-grown and hungry tiger in a cage, you are nothing else but a tasty dish that the tiger is going to kill, eat, and put an end to his hunger with. But how does this lump of meat think? How do thoughts come to us? How do you generate thoughts and feelings? How do you invent and fly? How do you calculate and stipulate on millions? How? How do we study and look at stars and constellations that are millions light years away. My brothers and my sisters, and especially you who is listening to me now, each one of you, if you think you are a simple creature, then you certainly don't know who you are. If you think of yourself as someone who eats and drinks to only pee and poop, then you don't know who you are. If your purpose on earth is to only own and spend, then you don't know who you are. If you think Allah introduced himself to you, created an infinite universe with billions of galaxies, moons, and stars, embellished the earth and submitted it to you, to your powers, endowed you with a soul that no science, no magic, and no speculations can describe. If you think that time was given to you to waste it in vain and vile activities without being accountable for it, then you don't know your purpose, you don't know who you are, and you certainly don't know who your God is. You don't know this. If all you come up with is nothing else but a house you bought with a haram mortgage, a woman you flirted with and then bedded her, if you think wearing blue jeans and call it a hijab or put on a makeup outside and call it a beauty, then you don't know your purpose. You don't know your God. If you think Allah excelled and perfected your creation, your making, the world you live in just so you can't kill time, amass wealth and subserve your inner wantings and desires in the haram, then you totally don't know your true purpose nor how the direction or where the direction you must take is. My brothers and my sisters, if you believe that this world and its complexities, and if you believe that the body which carries you is limited to your short sights, limited visions, weak trust, egocentric behaviors, ignorance and indulgences, then you certainly qualify for the most realistic description by Allah, and that is kal an'am, like animals. Any man who lives for the now and doesn't think about the future is like an animal. And this is not the tiger, the cattle. Do you know why? Imagine you have a hundred sheep and you drive them into a field. The sheep doesn't walk in and start analyzing where there is more grass. The sheep starts eating the moment you let him in. The sheep never thinks about later. He thinks about now. I eat now. My brothers and my sisters, let me ask you a question. If I was to ask you, who are you? You would say, my name is so and so. And if I said, what are you? What defines you? If you had a registration plate, what would you write on it for the world to know you by? What makes you stand from the crowd? You have become a human waste the day you stopped being curious than Allah to have that infinite mercy on you. So that you don't go rotten, gives you children. And again, through them, gives you a hint to revive your curiosity. One more time. What have you done with that beautiful and unquenchable learning thirst you had as a child? When was the last time you held in your hands a book? 
And I don't talk about the Quran because you don't understand the message of the Quran as it should. I'm talking a book. When was the last time you had a book, something to nourish your mind? When you were a little kid, you ask, Dad, what's this? Mom, what's that? What's this? What's this? What's this? Why have you stopped asking that question today? Why? My brothers, I personally have never ever believed, nor do I believe that my powerful brain, where Allah trusted the knowledge of the universe, mankind, animal kind, and things kind, is this squishy, soft, and less than two pound weight meat contained in my skull. My brain goes far beyond that. My brain is not restricted to, nor is contained to my head, my brothers and my sisters. The brain you have is contained and lives in the boundless, endless, and vastness of your soul. Who I am and what I am. My brothers and my sisters, the day you stopped asking questions to grow, that day you stopped being innocent. That day you put down your toys, which weren't just toys, but they were keys to a never-ending imagination. Give a small toy to a kid and watch him how his imagination takes over. The day you stopped dreaming, creating beautiful worlds in your mind, that day you signed your demise papers. File me into this dusty box of my ill crafting. I am no longer good as a human. My brothers and my sisters, Allah has taught you the name of all matters. What are you going to do with that knowledge? What are you going to do with the status, with that position? Are you going to narrow the streets and tighten your grip on those who haven't yet been touched by Allah's mercy? Do you think Allah made you a Muslim so you can mess up things? Lie to get benefits, lie to build a business, deceive to receive and manipulate to create opportunities for yourself? Do you think Allah surrendered all matters to serve and service you so you can have good time, cheat time, and market horrid, horrible, foggy, unclean, non-objective, unplanned, and advanced, backward, negative, unsurmountable obstacles for mankind to never ever look into Islam? Haven't you heard of the threat, my brothers and my sisters? Haven't you seen the consequences of where we are today? Haven't you tasted some of the bitterness of our repulsive actions? Your repulsive behaviors, your repulsive appearance. My brothers, I will end with this thought here for the sisters and for the brothers. Wallahi, there are times I see a Muslim man or woman wearing a halal hijab for the woman in which she carries herself and her beliefs so well that I can feel the beauty of Islam through her. While at other times, I see the hard grip of culture and all dark days through an untidy, unalive, and un-Islamic hijab, which belongs more to a dead cultural past than to Islam. What I mean by this, my brothers and my sisters, is that sometimes you see a sister in the street wearing her full hijab, full hi Islamic hijab, mashallah. And you can feel through her the beauty of Islam, the way she carries herself. And you can see the pride and mashallah, the beauty of Islam. Some other times I see a, a lady, the way she's dressed, her hijab doesn't look like, it looks like a piece of cloth, untidy, unironed. The, the, the colors are not working together. And she goes out, the shoes are a pair of plastic, something like that. And she walks in the street. And I look at her and I go, why, oh why? What message are you sending to the world out there? If a non-Muslim woman wakes up at six o'clock in the morning to spend one hour in front of her mirrors to look the best of herself and she gets out like that, why are you Muslim dingling anything? And the way I see you in the street, the message that I get really is hijab sucks. But I'm stuck with it, and I can't remove it for various personal reasons. Don't come to Islam, you will lose a lot. When you come to Islam, you will wear the hijab that I am wearing. 
my brothers and my sisters for the and same thing for brothers. Sometimes I see him, somebody in the in the in the underground. The way his beard looks all over the town, and he's wearing this uh, something on his head, the the, the, the hat or the the kippa, whatever it is, the taqiyah, and it doesn't go at all with his clothes. He's wearing a long kameez, and he is very smarty. He's wearing sneakers with blue jeans and then that, or sometimes a, a baseball cap. I look at him and go, what is this? What message are you giving to the people that are watching you outside? The dress code. And especially when you are representing Islam, when you wear a hijab. Sometimes I see a girl wearing tight blue jeans. It's like the jeans is going to explode the way she contains her bum in the jeans. Like, subhanAllah, what's going on here? And she only covers her head, but her chest is in your, in your face and everything. Perfume is from here until Pakistan. And, and, and I go to myself, what message are we sending to the world? What message are we sending to the world? The message is, I don't want hijab. And I'm trying to find any way to avoid it, but due to circumstances, I cannot. My brothers and my sisters, I want to end this talk here by saying this. Allah created you and made you special. You are special in the sight of Allah and you actually mean a lot to Allah. He has given you all the tools to be totally free. As I said the other day, everything on earth apart of Allah is a tool in your hand. Your purpose of existence is Allah. Don't let your family patronize you. Or guiltize you in committing disobeying Allah. Don't let people put you down. You have to grow stronger. The heart is yours. Not to people to mess up with. Love is yours. Not to people to mess it up. You are a Muslim. Allah has chosen you a Muslim. He could have made you a rat. And he could have made you a cow worshiper. But he made you a Muslim. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. This is pep talk or super pep talk number one where I really, really ask 1,000 questions. And I'm tickling your mind in so many different directions to start looking at yourself as a valuable asset to the Muslim nation first and to the world second. Your children are also an asset. Don't wait on the next family to make the biggest scholar, to the biggest scientist. Why not your child? Why not invest in your child and make him the best next thing that's going to happen to humanity? Isn't that something worth doing? I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us all be the best of who we can be. My brothers and my sisters, sit down, listen to this super pep talk, take notes, take notes, take notes. And analyze what I said and write it down. And send it to me. I can help you develop. If you don't have a strategy in life, I can help you define one. If, you don't have, if your purpose in this life is not clear, I can help you. If your marital relationship is not working your husband the way you want it, I can help you set course and become better. If, 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 if I can help you, I can help you. Don't surrender to your imagination. Remember, you are right. You are made of right and wrong. And you are made of love and fear. Love goes with right and fear goes with wrong. Choice is yours. This is your brother, Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa. And this is Super Pep Talk number one. And my telephone number is 078 And if you need my help, I am here. If you want to donate to this cause, you are welcome to. Bi'idhnillah, bi'idhnillah, within the next couple of weeks, we are going to start our YouTube super channel. And a few more things are going to happen during this time. Please, please, please keep us in our, your dua. Make dua for us and put where you, uh, your actions where your mouth is. Help us take the, uh, the, this project off ground. Wa sallillahu ma'ala nabiyyina Muhammad subhanak Allahumma bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh